Hey Stub Clovers, welcome back to another one of our 25 Days of Disney. I'm Jennifer. I'm Amanda. And we are going to get into a little bit of a history video, kind of like what we were doing last year that a lot of you really liked. So we today are going to talk about the history of the wonderful world of Disney. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing, that it was all started by a mouse. Be a man, we must be swift as a coursing river. Be a man, with all the force of a great typhoon. Be a man, with all the strength of a raging fire. Mysterious as the dark side of the moon. Please welcome. Now that name sounds really familiar, but you might have known it by a different name. Yes. So. Wonderful World of Disney has gone through many name changes over the years. It's gone through nine name changes. That's a lot. <laughs> so no matter what generation you are from, what decade you're from, this show somehow touched upon you some way or another or you came across it. So these, this is the roll call of all of the names that Wonderful World of Disney that is currently right now has gone through over the years. Here are the names. Walt Disney's Disneyland. Walt Disney Presents, Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color, The Wonderful World of Disney, Disney's Wonderful World, Walt Disney, The Disney Sunday Movie, The Magical World of Disney, and The Wonderful World of Disney. Over the years, it has gone through all of those different name changes, but it still solely is the same show, just switching it up. This. The way how it started was Walt Disney was actually using this broadcasting of Walt Disney's Disneyland to actually promote Disneyland before it opened. He was using this to fund money. And so what he would do is he would go through promoting different parts of the park. That's really smart. So it was designed to fund the opening of Disneyland. And so he is, of course, the original Imagineer. So, of course, he would come up with this brilliant idea to bring in money because it was expensive to make Disneyland. I can only imagine. Mm -hmm. you know, probably even still, if you counted for inflation today, I don't think even Jeff Bezos could afford to make Disneyland from mm -hmm. scratch. This was an anthology series that what he did is that he went through different parks. So one time he was talking about Adventureland, showing what's gonna happen there, what could happen. And a lot of times what he was doing is going through the different offices, showing a map of Disneyland and showing models oh. and going through model workshops. Or it would be kind of like when they would play like maybe like a little film that could kind of coincide with that land. Okay. So maybe like a Davy Crockett would be like a, like a, an adventure land type of thing. So they might play a clip or something like that. There was one for Frontierland. Frontierland is going to be, that is going to be like with like more of like cowboys and Indians type of thing, like adventure, okay. even though that's Frontierland, because it'd be like, oh, I'm coming like to the frontier oh. type of thing. Because the Frontierland right now, that's going to be where you've got like um, Big Thunder Mountain, like the train that goes around oh. the track. Yeah. So then there was also Tomorrowland. That's going to show what is yet to come, like the future, <laughs> showing all that stuff. And then Fantasyland. Fantasyland is going to be where all of the movie rides are going to be. So that's where the teacups were. That's where the Peter Pan ride was. He went through all of those. So that's what originally brought up this project. And for Walt Disney, he was the first major film producer to see the benefit of producing a TV show. That's awesome. For that time, TV was so new. Mm -hmm. So he was so innovative and so smart in so many ways yeah. when you really think about it. So what he, there were some independent producers who did this, but he was a major film producer. Wonderful World actually featured one of the world's first stereo simulcasts. Simulcast is where you're airing something in two different ways at the same time. So for this, they used um, Sleeping Beauty. they used Sleeping Beauty for this, where they they aired it on the television, and at the same time they aired it on the radio in sync with each other. So if you were listening to the radio and you were watching it on TV, because back then not everyone had TV in each room like we kind of do now. Mm -hmm. So you could turn on the radio in the kitchen, turn on the TV in the living room. He could be listening to it at the same exact time and still know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Now, the first 
full-length movie that Disney aired on as part of their anthology series was The Parent Trap. Not the Lindsay Lohan one. This mm-hmm. is the original Parent Trap. Mm-hmm. So it was released in 1961 and became a huge hit for Disney. Mm-hmm. So by 1976, Disney was ready to share some of its more popular properties with the anthology series, hoping to boost the ratings. That's how The Parent Trap came to air a two-and-a-half-hour special. Mm-hmm. All the previous episodes had been locked into the program's hour-long format, oh, apart wow. from two-hour ep- two long episodes that aired the previous year in 1975. And so Parent Trap, local story, everyone likes it. Mm-hmm. I actually prefer this version of the Parent Trap. I've never, seen, I've never seen the original. Really? Yeah. I like this one a lot. Because hmm. I believe, I'm going to have to correct myself if I'm wrong, but I believe it's actually... Um, two actresses as the twins versus where for the current one with Lindsay Lohan, that's just her being duplicated. Hmm. So during the 80s, they were going to or trying to conclude Wonderful World of Disney, um, whatever name it was, taking at that period of time. So a lot of people were upset by that. So what they did is, so in 1983, what they did is they launched the Disney Channel. So that's when it officially came out. So in a sense that the Disney Channel came out of the wonderful world of Disney. And this was to kind of, they were wording it as to help heal the wounds of that leaving TV. Because wonderful world of Disney, basically, it was regurgitated material. So it was mm-hmm. always going to be, this is the place you could go to rewatch your favorite movies or television shows. That mm-hmm. was about, that's how it was showcased on television. Okay. But... When that was ending, people were probably freaking out. Well, where are we going to watch this? Well, that's when they rolled out the Disney Channel, where that's what it was going to be. It was going to be, it was relied on a lot of regurgitated material from the anthology series. Mm -hmm. So it was going to be replaying movies and stuff like that. The very first program that aired on the Disney Channel that was brand new was Good Morning, Mickey. And it featured the classic Disney cartoons. I love those. Mm Mm-hmm. Something really interesting that I learned when doing research about the wonderful world of Disney is that this was the area that showcased Jim Henson's last Muppet project. I had no idea this even existed being a Disney World fan, but it was the Muppets at Disney World. And I actually watched this. It was pretty funny because of how the filming took place, uh, just the way that they did it. It was cute. It was funny. They brought in... A lot of actors and actresses like Raven Simone is in it when she's little and she sings Rainbow Connection I believe with Kermit it was really cool how they brought that together and so uh, during that time period it was called the magical world of Disney when this came out now this was the very last one that Jim Henson actually worked on it the special aired May 6th 1990 and unfortunately he passed away 10 days later on May 16th. So this was the last time that his hands and he was part of that project. Wow. That's a really key piece of history right there. Mm -hmm. But not even just Disney, but Muppets being such a big thing, even before they were bought by Disney, Mm -hmm. that this was the last thing Jim Henson personally worked on. Right. And I'm not specifically sure my um thinking right now but muppets were brought into mgm studios i don't know if the muppets vision 3d that we talked about Mm -hmm. in the ip video if they were already in the parks before this or after this however you don't know this might have played a key role in when disney bought muppets because Mm -hmm. it was the last his last project was with them. Yeah. So you never know. That could have been part of how they were doing that. That could have been. Now, Wonderful World of Disney is something that we all remember from our generation because it was always known as Sunday Movie Nights. Yeah. And the theme song that we all know that I believe it was in 1998 they started airing that or that was the time period. Mm-hmm. It was just so memorable. And we're going to insert a clip of it. <laughs>
castle is shown, the Cinderella castle, and as they are going around almost like filming the castle as they're moving around it, each section they have the different Disney favorite movie moments. Yeah. And they're kind of, even though they're playing a whole new world in the background as a general song, whatever piece of the movie moment they're at, like Lion King, they'll change the music to sound like the Lion King music. Oh. Or Hunchback of Notre Dame, they'll play the music that way. Or the Santa Claus will make it sound like Christmas music when Tim Allen's going down the <laughs> chimney. It's always like, one of my favorite parts. You so, and Tim Allen. <laughs> but then they show Toy Story also. They do. So it's, that is just so memorable. So watching that on YouTube, I just, it just brings back all of the wonderful memories. And the same thing, they would play old favorites, new mm -hmm. favorites. And we're going to go through a list of some of the movies that were created just for Wonderful World of Disney. The first is um, on the list is Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella. This is Whitney Houston was in it. Oh, with Brandy as yes, Cinderella. Brandy was I in it. I love this version. And a lot of Broadway stars uh, were in this too. Oh, really? Um, I can't think of his name. This was put on television November 2nd, 1997, a full 40 years later after Cinderella came out. Oh. Brandy was in it. Whit um, Whitney Houston was in it. Whoopi oh. Goldberg was in it. Vi oh, Victor Garber. He is in the TV show The Flash that he was in there. He was also oh. in Legends of Tomorrow. He was in Music Man when they had, Wonderful World of Disney also did Music Man with Matthew Broderick. Um, okay. And then Al, um, Jason Alexander, he is from Seinfeld, he was <laughs> in it. Burnett Peters was also in this. Okay. Another one was Tower of <laughs> Terror. Tower of Terror came out October 26, 1997, and that was based off of the ride. Steven Gutenberg's in this. You might know him from, he is in It Takes Two with Mary Kay and Ashley. That's how I always oh. recognize him. <laughs> he also is, I think, in Three Men and a Baby. Oh. That's, there's that series where um, Tom Selleck is in. Yeah. He's one of the guys in it. There's also Model Behavior with Justin Timberlake, March 12, 2000. Oh my God. That feels like forever ago. That's when NSYNC was still a thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, a, a Night in Camelot, Whoopi Goldberg is in that. Oh. Angels in the End Zone. <laughs> I've never seen that. Angels in the End Zone. I know this is the sequel to Angels in the Outfield, mm -hmm. but I've never watched Angels in the End Zone. November 9th, 1997. Switching Goals was with Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. <laughs> and then H.E. Double Hockey Sticks. <laughs> And it is um, the guy, um, one of the guys from Boy Meets World is in this. Oh, oh, Matthew Lawrence. Okay. Mm hmm And that was Oh, October. Will Friedle. Sorry, Will Friedle. Mm-hmm. October 3rd, 1999. Now, a lot of people get confused on, they have thought for years that there were movies that were Disney Channel original movies. Yeah. However, they were really from Wonderful World of Disney or put on ABC where that was hosted at the time and so they said that you got to look carefully at what's what network it aired on if you saw that it was on ABC you'll have to look at the um, the network it was broadcast on. so I don't know how many of you remember the movie Toothless where Chrissy Alley is the tooth fairy I did not realize that that was a wonderful world of Disney movie not a Disney Channel original mm -hmm. Tower of Terror like we just spoke about Angels in the End Zone, Mr. Headmistress. Now, I believe this is the same actor who played to you know, Tootsie in that movie. It's a similar storyline where a guy has to pretend to be a girl to get a job. Oh, it's, <gasps> that one's more raunchy. This one's a, hopefully it being um, Disney, it'd be not as raunchy. I've never seen it, but mm -hmm. it looks like the same actor. Mm -hmm. Safety Patrol, and never that. Heard of it. My Date with the President's Daughter. I remember this movie and I could have sworn it was a Disney Channel original movie, but it's not. It's Wonderful World of Disney. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is, like, I love this movie. And again, it's another Will Friedle movie mm -hmm. in it. So 
he's gotten a lot of popularity from Boy Meets World. Mm -hmm. Sabrina goes to Rome, and this one is with uh, Melissa Joan Hart's Sabrina. Mm -hmm. So that just makes me love it even more. I don't think I've actually seen this movie, but I'm now I kind of want to because I know she's in it. Mm-hmm. Yellow Knight and Camelot, like we've spoken about. A saintly switch. Never heard of us. It's another, I've never heard of. Right. Saintly switch is another play on Freaky Friday. Oh. So, uh, but this one is where a husband and wife switch bodies instead of a mother and daughter. Oh. That's going to be awkward. So, lovely. <laughs> and then there's also Sabrina Down Under. I remember this one. I don't remember the Rome one, but I remember this mermaid one. Apparently, yeah. this was supposed to be a sequel to Sabrina Goes to Rome. Again, right. Melissa Joan Hart, and she gets a crush on a merman. Mm -hmm. I need to watch this one too, but I haven't seen it. Wow, that was it. I think I remember watching it when it came on. That was in 1999. Yeah. I thought I was a little bit older when that was on. And there's H E Double Hockey Sticks. Switching Goals, that we mentioned, Mary Kate and Ashley. Life Size, which is the one with Tyra Banks and Lindsay Lohan. Mm -hmm. I, again, I thought. It was a Disney Channel original movie. Sometimes people might have got it confused because they were probably just airing this also on Disney Channel. People were just assuming since it was never a movie in theaters or out like on VHS at the time that it was Disney Channels. But right. evidently it's Wonderful World of Disney. It depends on where it originally aired. Mm -hmm. And then there's Model Behavior with Justin Timberlake like we spoke about. So a lot of good movies on here actually. Mm -hmm. A lot of movies that we actually recognize. Mm -hmm. In the comments below, you can always tell us what do you remember watching on a Sunday night growing up on Wonderful World of Disney. I remember seeing some of these, but I also remember just watching the classic Disney movies that they would play. Yes. I loved watching, you know, on Sunday nights, that would be with me and my siblings. I'm one of four. And that would be how my parents got us all together to sit down <laughs> and just be quiet. <laughs> So thanks for joining us today, guys. It, um, I hope you liked one of our other history videos. We went into some other details. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. If you enjoyed me, give this video a thumbs up. See the light.